Hey friends, how are you? Um, so I'm coming up on a, uh, the, my 100th vinyl update. I don't know that I'll do anything special for it. Uh, um, Pudsey was asked, was kind of asking what if I would do something special. I don't know. I'm thinking my inclination is to focus number 100 specifically on records and music that I really love that I've been trying to find time to show you, stuff that I really like. And so that's probably what I'll do, but it's uh, my lunch break, and uh, I'll, 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 I'll uh, show some records I've been listening to because I'm I'm not buying anything hardly at all this week. But I'll, I'll com re I think I'd like to comment back to some comments. Um, and um, a vinyl member uh, echoes something uh, just uh, today or yesterday left me the comment. Uh, you probably love your records better than your wife. Well, answer is, yeah, I'm single. That's why I'm single. Yeah, you know. I've said throughout, I know I have a bunch of, oh, so I've only, let me put that together with another thought. Um, I've been noticing comments from people who obviously are seeing my videos for the first time, and obviously I have no expectations. I have a lot of videos that people are going to know my background or that they've watched everything before they comment. But I will say that um, it is obvious that more people are watching who do not know my background. Like for recently, someone uh, recently, was it yesterday, just said, I'll give you 10 bucks if you got a Slayer or an Iron Maiden album, which hits me that the person must have just discovered me not realizing my background and how much I love all music and how much I love metal and the fact that I have that music, you know. Uh, I guess I'm sort of piggybacking on the thought that I have lived with all my life, which is on the surface, I appear to be something and I'm much more than what you see, which has always been frustrating to me how uh, as a as a human race, we tend to have knee-jerk reactions. You see a tall person, you'll think, oh, he must play basketball. You see a black person and you'll have a number of thoughts. And you'll see a all kinds of things and you'll have thoughts you know and one of the th one of the things that I've always dealt with is this perception of me as a black person that you know you can't possibly know this all this music that you're listening to you can't possibly be that worldwide intelligent or whatever you know that there's some kind of fluke here you know you, you know which has always galled me and frustrated me and so I talk about it at times you know and that's what I'm kind of riffing on here is that that to me just seemed like another example where, you know, the world, the face value of what things seems to be is just, it's just not, that's not what it is. And so much more than what you see. So I just wanted to kind of talk about those things and then just show a few more records of what I've been listening to. Um, and I did get one new record in, in the mail. Last night I decided to listen to uh, Automatic Writing by Steve Kindler. Steve Kindler is a violinist who, uh, for a time, was in the second version of the Mahavishnu Orchestra with John McLaughlin. American, American born. I think he's from Oregon. And I hadn't listened to this all the way through, ever. And last night, this was a revelation. This is beautiful. Teja Bell on guitar. Um, another fantastic artist who is associated with New Age. hate that term. This is beautiful, flowing, peaceful, beautiful, beautiful. Came out in the 80s, I think. 1984. This was a pleasant surprise. Um, I had never listened to it all the way through. I had kind of taken it a little bit for granted because of the fact that it's on the Global Pacific label. And so again, kind of uh, when I bought it, you know, I knew who he was, but seeing the label I just kind of almost dismissed it well I'll buy this and maybe I'll eventually get to it it's really good really peaceful I pulled this I haven't played it yet because it was right next to the Steve Kindler this is his brother Bob Kindler Waters of Life and this again is all also on the Global Pacific label Steve is on it looking at the cover and the titles it has that spiritual slash come new age sort of slant, it appears. I'm looking forward to playing this. I'll bet this is going to be good, too. I meant to play it last night. I didn't get to it. 
Oh, that's the other comment I've been reflecting on wanting to share. Um, another uh, friend here in the vinyl community had mentioned, vinyl lady had said, well, one of these days I'm going to see something that I recognize, Derek, and I just wanted to say that this really is what I listen to, these records I'm showing you. Um, this really is my interest, and I do have records by groups that you all know. I know that music so well, and time is so short, that's why I'm so busy listening to and looking for other musics. And I've been meaning to do this, to show you something that's in my desk. To show you I'm a member of the human race. As you know, I don't care for KISS, but look what I have. I have KISS cards. I have KISS collecting cards. These were given to me years ago, and I just keep them for, I don't know why, re for what reason, but I thought I'd show you. I've never owned a KISS record, and I don't think I ever will, but I have KISS cards. I had a chance to get into KISS. I was still young when they were around, but one of my best friends from childhood, when he turned me on to KISS, it was too late. I said, this is, this is, this is, this is crap is for kids. I'm looking for real music. Once again, you folks that like Kiss, please show your maturity. Don't take it personally. I'm telling you Derek's experience. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about Kiss. They're dreadful musically. They're dreadful. Okay. Uh, Astral Traveler <laughs> has gotten... He'd be texting the hell out of me <laughs> almost every night. And um, it's cool because we have a lot to talk about in common. I mean, you know, Astral Traveler, like um, Sonic Mainliner, Big Star 1000, and some of the other collectors on here have very similar interests as I do. And it's very exciting to find people to talk to who kind of know about this stuff. And one of the records I asked him about last night, did he know about, course he knew so I had to pull it out and play because it it's one of my favorites and man this is fantastic jazz rock friends this is so amazing this is so so powerful and sparks flying on this cut from the very first track sparks are flying these guys are on fire on these uh, sessions we have um we have Mark Cohen on sax, Je John Abercrombie on guitar, Clint Houston on bass, and Jeff Williams on drums. Whatever happened to this guy? This guy's playing his ass off on here, okay? Okay, so on here it tells me at the time he was playing with Dave Liebman. This is killer. Now, I used to have an original, sold it. This is a reissue on Carolyn. More than likely, Chris... You still have an original, don't you, with your bad self. This is monster jazz rock, guys. Monster jazz rock. If I could find another copy of this at a reasonable price, this is what I would buy for my whoever I end up with in the vinyl swappery. It is monster. Last night I pulled this out. I hadn't listened to Trisomy 21 in a long time. A Belgian band from the 80s who were... Oh, it's hard to describe. It was kind of like that bed sit uh, electro moving into more electro on the Play It Again Sam. This is one of the early records when they're just getting it together, so it's kind of primitive. The worst thing about this is the vocals. The vocals are just trash. You can't sing. And so, you know, it's like they can't even try to sing, so this, the vocals are just horrid, for my opinion. But the music, which is like you can tell these guys are just learning how to operate these boxes. And push this button, push that button. Oh, it does this. Okay. Okay, now we're on our way. But what's cool is the ideas and the music that they're making. The ideas are beyond their capability, and it's great. Try Somi 21. This this was a real good listen. Once again, piggybacking on things that I watch in other videos, um, I saw that Teddy bought this recently. I've had it for ages, and so I pulled it out because I had, hadn't listened to it in a while. And what a tour de force. Red Buddha by Stomo Yamashita. This is a percussion tour de force. This is like going into the forest, getting lost, and loving it. This man is a master percussionist. And this album is brilliant. All percussion. It's on the Egg Lego label, and I'm sort of picking up on this. I think that there's a pressing plant in France that when they press records, they come out 
it's this black thing. So like egg has the egg label is usually printed on, you know, in color. This is one of those black things like charisma and some other uh, labels I've seen with uh, French black versions of them. So I don't really exactly know what I'm talking about. I'm just surmising that this may have come from a particular pressing plant that makes records all the same way. The most recent record I got was again through watching videos. I've had forever the technology of Tears by Fred Frith on CD. I didn't know that it was out in America at any time and on the SST label. I didn't know that until I saw Glowing Double O Cabbage had bought it. I, I love this album. I love Fred Frith. I just love what he does with sound. I really, really do. And so when I saw that he had found this on, on vinyl, I said, wow, I'd love to have that for my Frith collection on vinyl. And it was relatively easy to find. Double album. Uh, music that was commissioned for some, um, some works. And uh, this is excellent. Fred Frith is excellent, excellent, excellent. Continuing on the Creation Records thing, um, I decided to pull another Creation Records album to see what would happen with it this time. And I pulled Revolving Paint Dream. The name of this album is um, Mother Watch Me Burn. And this is real good. It's a str I, f I think it's kind of a strange mixture of noise and pop. Somewhere, I mean, Jesus and Mary Chain come to mind a little bit, but then it's got this lazy pop kind of feel, too, of its own. I love this cover, too, and I wonder if they ever put out a gatefold of this, which I doubt they did. So you can't see the entire picture. I just love it. So this, I listened to all of side one, and I love how it starts really noisy, and then it kind of chills out into some, some cool pop. And Creation is just a badass label. It actually is. It's a really a wonderful label. And I would say once again to um, uh, Andreas Grecian Thunder, he was asking about what are some singles labels that I collect. Creation is one. If I see anything on Creation... Um, that's affordable, especially on single. I buy it. Um, so that was, that was a pleasant journey on the creation label, Revolving Paint Dream. I pulled this thinking about, uh, Jimmy Smith. Um, Nathan Morales was playing the sermon by Jimmy Smith. And I thought to myself, yeah, Jimmy Smith is badass. I wonder if anybody knows about Jimmy, Jimmy McGriff. Here's another badass uh, organ jazz organist from uh, the 60s and I um, this is a second album released in 1963 called one of mine Jimmy McGriff had a way of setting the stops on the organ so that he could make it talk it sounds like it's literally it's I've never heard anyone else do it no one this, this is amazing I think this is amazing I'm again I wish I had more words it's very bluesy, and as you know, I don't, I don't like to go there. But this man's playing is so intense that he had me listening. Honestly, when I hear the blues changes come on, I switch the station, I switch the track, I turn it off. I, I just, I want you to know that, you know, even if you don't want to know that about me, I want you to know that. But I got through this because the playing is so intense. It's so good. So, so good. If you like Jimmy Hen, I mean, no, if you like Jimmy Smith and you like jazz organ, Charles Earl and Brother Jack McDuff, if you would like to know about another um, large, largely talented jazz organist, look for some Jimmy McGriff. All right, I'm going to stop with this one. The Electronic Art Ensemble in Quietude. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that these guys are some classically trained cats from uh, the New York area. I understand they, you know, done concerts at Carnegie Hall and stuff like this. I don't know any of the names of the artists here, but this is potent. It's on the Grandma Vision label. Great label. Some of the songs seem kind of like they're academic exercises, but then side two, 
No, no, actually, it's three. It's the first side. Three bursts set out. It starts off really, really, really strong. This is really very, very interesting. And not uh, sounding like anyone or any particular genre of, of electronic music. It's it's cohesive though. It's not just bleeps and blurps. There there are bleeps and blurps, but there's a there's a compositional hang to it, or just there's a way that it's it works. Okay, one more record. Here's another record where I've had for a long time, and you can tell because of the ring wear. The Italian band Libra. Um, interesting, a prog slash funk band on the Motown label. More, quite a bit of prog leanings. A couple songs on here. The playing is fantastic, like PFM or something. You know, kind of jazzy, kind of funky, but proggy too. Really good playing. The vocals... I don't care for the vocalist's voice is annoying. It's about a bit like a yeah. Um, I've always wondered why you know, and I, I think it's again the nerdiness to me. It's like why do we have to hear somebody even sing if they can't sing? Just play. Shut up and sing. It's shut up and play. But those are some of the records that I've been playing since my last. What have I been playing? And. Uh, I don't want to make this too much longer. I was about to make a comment on current events. I'll leave it like this. Current events are really fucked up right now. Leave me comments, people. And, and show some love to somebody, including yourself.